everyone! My name is Cami Williams and I'm a developer advocate for Facebook Open Source. I'm assuming if you've clicked on this video you probably have a project that you recently open sourced, or an existing open source project and are curious on how to promote it, taking it to the next level, how to scale the project, reach new audiences, and gain more traction in your space. As a developer advocate for open source, I am going to share with you my seven tips on how to promote your open source project. As always, if you're watching this video and you have tips that you would like to share for open sourcing projects and promoting them, please leave a comment down below. Tip number one, make sure your project is open sourced for everyone. When I think about this, I just remember that first impressions matter and a lot of times the first impression from your project is with the GitHub repo. So that repo should be set up for all types of users. You don't know who might be coming across your project or how they might be doing so, but the first thing everybody sees is your README. In your README, it's important to talk about what your project does. Don't shy away from giving a lot of context. I advise folks to think of just who, what, where, when, why, how. What is the project? Who is the project intended for? Why is it important or useful for users? When should you use it or integrate it into your system? How do you integrate it into your system? And finally, where is it already being used? What examples can you give? Now you might be thinking, wow, that's a lot to include in a readme. A readme is supposed to be relatively brief, but I would actually argue including all of this information in your readme helps your project more, helps developers to understand what you're all about. That way your mission will effectively be conveyed to users that come across your project. Take this a step further and consider your project as a place where you want everyone to feel like they're included. Especially as you grow and scale your project, it's really important to have a strong community behind it. And I think one of the easiest way to do so is to have a code of conduct. It's wise if this code of conduct applies to both users and contributors. With codes of conducts, you also don't really have to reinvent the wheel. Fortunately, there's a lot of projects, communities, even events that already have them. In your README, you can link to a code of conduct that resonates with you most. Take the Facebook open source code of conduct as a template. Setting this precedent right away will ensure that everybody feels welcome to your project's community. Tip number two, make your project look nice. <laughs> if you have all this text in your README, it's also probably a good idea to create a landing page for your project. I recommend setting one up with Docusaurus or something similar. Your landing page can also include this who, what, where, when, why, how, in addition to some formatted tech docs, potentially links to Stack Overflow, GitHub, Twitter. With Docusaurus, you can easily also integrate blog posts, which is really nice. And there you can share various community spotlights to again, grow and support the community that's already existing around your project. Tip number three, make life easy for your developers. Thinking back to the how aspect of the project, how would the project be used? Create some quick start guides to share in your README or tech docs. A lot of times developers just want to copy code and run with it. So if you don't already have it, try to develop some kind of system for them to be able to do so. If you have it already integrated in your project, highlight it, make it as easy for developers to find as possible. Beyond quick starts, it's also important to consider a learning narrative to reduce that barrier to entry for different developers. If you don't already have them, tutorials are a great way for developers to learn how to use your project. Consider how your users learn. It's helpful to them to categorize your tutorials from 100 to 500 level or beginner, intermediate, advanced. If you want to scale your project too, try and incorporate other community members into this effort. Think outside your own understanding. For example, if I have a machine learning open source project that I want to scale, Scale, I don't want to cater my project just to people who are in machine learning. Now granted the top 1% of 1% machine learning architects or developers are probably the ones that are going to help me contribute and maintain a lot of the bulk of the project, but those that are outside of the expertise are what is going to make the project more well-rounded. Bring in use cases that I didn't think of before. So I want to make sure my project is welcome to everyone of any skill set. This is a difficult task to accomplish, but again, and utilizing your community that's already around you can help. Chances are you can reach out to open source community members who aren't aware of your project but are experts in some other field to give you feedback on your project and potentially fill in those gaps. Remember open source is by everyone and for everyone and composed of passionate people who want to make technology better so don't be afraid to reach out. This brings me to tip number four which is have a place for your community to interact. This could be in forums or on a chat app like Slack, Discord, Gitter or something of the like, but creating this space and making sure it adheres to your code of conduct promotes thought leadership and conversation. Tip number five, 
Once you have this place for your community to meet or conversations have already started, have a process for intaking feedback. For those who want to contribute to your project and help you maintain it, consider creating contribution guidelines. You can include this in your repo or in your tech docs. These guidelines should tell your audience how to get started with contributing. This could be best practices, using a specific linter, tabs or spaces, whatever you want. Probably the most important aspect is what information to include in a pull request or PR. If you're triaging issues or PRs, or you want to make sure that some specific information is included, put this in the contribution guide so that way the friction on both sides of actually getting this PR are out the door is reduced. If you're triaging GitHub issues, again, make sure that they are for everyone. What I mean by this is if you're triaging issues and only the core maintainers or contributors understand what those labels mean, that again creates a barrier to entry. So in your contribution guide, maybe include an explanation or glossary of those labels, especially if you have a lot. And as more and more start to come in, consider triaging them by languages or by beginner, intermediate, advanced level. Tip number six, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, give your community spotlights. In your landing page or where your community meets, or again, even just on Twitter, share what your community is doing what they're building, how they're contributing. Consider requesting community members to be guest authors on a blog or even on a feature. If a community member is doing this work, just highlight them. Now, if you have a new open source project that you've been working tirelessly on, this part might be a little bit gut-wrenching, but it's important to reduce your own headway with your community. Don't be afraid to add the active members of your community as core contributors or maintainers alongside yourself. You don't have to be the only one to carry the project, the brand, or execute on all of these tasks. Lastly, tip number seven is to try to stay up to date and as relevant with tech and tech news as you can. Doing all of the tasks or tips that I mentioned earlier can output a lot of content, whether it be release roundups, repo updates, community spotlights. Having someone on your team like a developer advocate can help not only source this content created, but also regularly post the content, understand where it should go, who it should be targeted, at and strategize to identify gaps in your audience. A developer advocate can also help you collaborate with other projects, partner up with those in your ecosystem, and ultimately help build your open source community and project. If you're someone who wants to be a developer advocate, feel free to check out the What is a Developer Advocate video on this channel. If you're looking for a way to get started, consider writing blogs, creating videos, podcasts. But before you do all of that, try and find a project that you're passionate about and you can help influence and build up in a positive way. Way. Hopefully these action items were helpful to you to take your project to that next level. In the Facebook open source family, we have a lot of projects that are open source and we're trying to make sure that almost all of them follow these tips. If you have a GitHub repo or open source project that you want us to take a look at and give feedback, leave a comment down below and we will. Or if you have a project or GitHub repo that you think really follows these tips well, also share it down below. I would love to check it out. I'm Cami Williams. Thanks so much for watching.